Hello and welcome to Less Like SEO. So as most people watching my videos already know, open um, Google's AI overviews play a major role in uh, ranking. And the reason for that is because it now takes up 25% of the first page of Google. So if you're somewhere on there in AI overviews, you stand a higher chance or a better chance of getting a click to your website and being read than if you were on number three of the SERPs. The other interesting thing about AI overviews is that you can be on the second page of Google and still be featured in AI overviews. And as I will go into in this video, we're going to discuss how to rank for AI overviews. It's important to keep in mind that AI overviews is highly unpredictable right now. So I've been running tests, I've been doing a few things, uh, to try and figure out how AI overviews works and how to rank for AI overviews. One of the things that I've done and one of the things I strongly advise you guys to do is read Google's patent on AI overviews. And it's patent number US 11769017B1. Make sure you go through the patent. Now, the patent is not complete. In this video, I'm not going to go through the entire patent. I'm going to go through the parts of the patent that work that we can use in our favor to create sites and to create content that Google overviews or Google's AI overviews will find good enough to feature and to link to. And so I'll start by going through some of the stuff that I found in the pattern that I think a lot of people will find very useful. And then I'll go into exactly what you should do to implement this and try it and rank in AI reviews. Now, the disclaimer here is it's highly unpredictable. This is based on some of, some of this is based on my testing. Most of it is based on what I've read in, the, in Google's AI, Google, or AI reviews pattern. The second thing is you should be doing a lot of testing. So I've been able to get some of our sites to show up in AI reviews, but I'm still doing a lot of testing. I st I'm still testing this across many of my websites. So if I can replicate this multiple times across multiple websites, I would know that this is working, but I need you guys to also do your own testing. And so don't rely entirely on what I'm telling you to rank for AI reviews. But this is a very, very, very good start if you want to start ranking for AI, AI reviews. Before I jump into the video, just want to say I offer SEO services. There's a link in the description that will take you to my website where you can fill out a form and get in touch with me, or you can directly buy my, my website added service and my topical mapping service, or you can book me for a consultation. All of this can be done directly from my website, cloudseodubai.com. Now that I have that out of the way, let's cut to my screen. So as you know, this is a video about how to optimize your content for AI overviews, but as we'll go into, this is mainly based on the patent that I've read, and it's an extensive patent. It goes through a lot of the stuff that uh, AI Overviews is examining and looking at before it becomes a part of its a, its a overview. So, as you already know, it takes up around twenty to twenty five percent of real estate on the first page of Google search, and it especially just shows up for businesses in the YM, YL niche. And so understanding how to optimize for AI overviews is crucial, especially since they occupy a huge amount of Google's search real estate. So establishing visibility for relevant keywords is obviously essential because that's what's going to drive the most traffic to your website. And so you should consider deciding whether or not you should pursue this. And for every business, this is going to be Different. So take a moment to take a look at the sheer amount of space that AI overview takes up. Organic search results are pushed far down because of the space it takes up, and the effect becomes even more pronounced when you click on the Show Me button and because it opens up uh, more of that. So here's a screenshot of the patent on the right of, of your screen, but there's also a link in the description. You can click on the link. It will take you to... Uh, the patent, and you can read through the patent. Um, it's dense reading because it's technical. And so if you were a nerd like me, you'd probably print it out, read it a few times, and 
you know, use a mind map to try and figure out what's going on. Um, so before we begin, it's important to note that the pattern discusses several measures related to visibility, such as search, result position, clicks, selection rate, authorship, and trustworthiness, amongst a few other things. Now, I'm not going to cover everything because I don't think they're important or relevant to ranking or showing up in AI overviews, but there are a lot more factors uh, in the pattern than what I've discussed in this video. Uh, and so again, if you want to read, make sure to click the link and read it. Uh, the pattern uh, frequently uses the word can to describe how the system works, indicating flexibility, which means that it can or cannot. And so there, that's conditional. For example, it states uh, the one or more query dependent measures for the query response result document can include suggesting various possible evaluation methods. And I will tell you from experience that there are quite a few variables that Google doesn't tell us about, even in the pattern. And as I'll show you in this presentation, there is a lot more to it than what meets the eye. So additionally, the pair pattern does not provide a detailed recipe for combining these measures or weighing or trying to figure out what they are. The system considers numerous factors, uh, which includes the user's profiles of the person who's searching for, what's, what's their previous search history, their location, their language, and their interaction with other search results or search documents. It's designed to create individuals individualized summaries for each user. So the goal of AI overviews is to provide mainly a customized uh, approach or a customized answer based on all of these variables. So the question is, so how does the AI overview measure each factor? So the pattern does not specify this. For instance, it, mention, it mentions authorship, domain, inbound links to trust, related to trustworthiness, but it does not explain how these are evaluated. It does not explain uh, how these metrics are calculated because there's no reference to metrics like domain age, domain authority. The primary goal of the system is to deliver personalized summaries for users. And that's something that you need to keep in mind is that is this is a very, very user uh, specific or at least Google wants it to be user specific. I also strongly recommend extensive testing. Again, identify your target queries and check if they trigger AI overviews. Ironically, you'll find that most of the time the trigger for why and mile industries, which Google mandates that you should have strong expertise in, but apparently Google thinks that AI overviews has even stronger um, expertise in this, and it also tends tends to pull up answers from less relevant spammy sources, which led me to believe that AI overviews can be gamed if you have the right strategy. So how does the AI overview select and link to documents? So the AI overview system identifies search result documents or SRDs as it's called or it's labeled in the pattern. So initially during the summary creation and later to add links. So what it does, it starts by assessing factors such as rank position, its uniqueness, quality, and trustworthiness. If the documents do not meet these primary criteria, the system then examines documents um, responsive to search queries using the same criteria, which means that it's looking for what documents were the most responsive for users who got the most clicks and comments and most time on site. It can also consider recent and implied queries made by the user evaluating them similarly. So this is something we don't have any control of. So someone searching for the best pizza near me may have started their search by how to make the best pizza, um, which is the best pizza in the world, uh, so Google is looking all of that. Google is looking at all of that. That AI overviews is then bringing, providing an answer based on its on that person's previous search history, of which we have no control over. Which is why I said that a lot of these factors is something we can't really optimize for. This gathered information, along with training data, is used to build a summary. If the summary is the AI overviews, once the summary is built, the system then reevaluates. Um, the search result documents to verify each part of the document. The patent highlights ranked position uh, as one of the keys to verification process. Additionally, the embedding distance between the summary content and related documents is crucial. So the system may also apply the same measures used during summary creation. So here's how the process mainly works. So when a user goes onto Google, they enter a search query. From that search query, over AI overviews will select documents that broadly represent um, that search query. And so it's not just the top ranking pages, it's also more diverse sources. So it's going to bring up uh, documents from various sources, not only from the top two or three, 
but in my experience also on page two and three and four, and it will just bring them together. It will then, it then uses a selection rate algorithm. The AI already existing because it has a click-through rate. So it then categorizes those pages in terms of their click-through rate and their other ranking factors based on the warehouse API that, that I've talked about in previous videos and the monitor clicks. So the user engagement obviously matters here. And so in my experience, documents with the most user engagement makes a cut. And then there are locality measures. So based on the query itself, so if it's a local query, Google will pull up results from the vicinity that's near the searcher. Then there's language. And so if the user is searching in a specific language, it then brings up documents in that language and delivers the results. Um, but there are a few measures that are independent of the query. So this is something that Google is performing or AI overviews is performing regardless of what query is being entered. It's uh, the selection rate of multiple queries. It, it means that when you put in a query, Google is uh, building a cluster of queries that are associated with it and then it's putting that out to fetch documents. And so then it's fetching those documents, it's categorizing them in terms of the most trustworthy documents, and that's based on author, domain, and inbound links to those documents. The exact valuation is not mentioned in, in the patent. And then it's the overall popularity. And so the more popular a document is, the higher the odds that it will make the cut into AI overviews. Uh, and so the focus here is time on site and also um, number of clicks to that page, even though it's not specified in the documents, but this is this has been my observation. The other thing is freshness of the, the document, so it evaluates when the document was created, and also more importantly is when it was last updated. And so the more frequently a document is updated and the more it has been updated and the more frequently it has been updated, the higher the odds are that it will show up in AI overviews if all things are equal. Next thing is document diversity. So what what it does is it picks from a large library of documents. And what it's doing is it, it, it wants different perspectives on that on the topic. And it's then combining those perspectives to put it to make it as part as to to, to make it a part of the AI overviews answer or the overview that it provides. And so the question is, how do you use this to optimize for AI overviews? Well, the first thing is you want to create short snippets of content. And by that, I mean, if you're creating a thousand page article, create it in 100 word snippets. So title, um, introduction, H2, 100 word snippet, H2, 100 word snippet, H3, 100 word snippet, H4, 100 word snippet. And so we have 10 H2s, H3s, and it's all very well um, linked to each other in terms of their H1s and H2s and H3s. They're all relevant. They're all directly related. They all have a semantic relationship, and they're also easy to read for the user, but also for AI overviews to quickly pick that up and evaluate it. Because, a Google, because AI overviews is not picking the entire page, it's picking up snippets from the page. And so if you make it easy for Google to find a snippet that's relevant, you're making it easier to also uh, be featured in AI overviews. The next thing also, you want to make sure that you win the featured snippets. So nine out of 10 times I've seen in many industries, if you have the featured snippet, you will be featured in AI overviews. And so by using this method, you're improving your chances of being featured, winning the featured snippet. But then also if you're using schema, you're improving the odds of being featured in the feature snippet, even though schema, my experience doesn't really matter to AI or views, but being in the featured snippet, that that that's what matters. Um, next thing you want to do is once your content is created, is published, you want to update it like every week. If there's new information, anything you find that's new, make sure that that document is updated. Put in a date, like for instance, updated blah 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 date. Add the updated text. Publish. Make sure that there's a chronological um, history of your updates on that page. So I uh, uh, updated July 2024, updated November 2024, updated in December 2024. Make sure that those updates are clearly visible on your site. 
Um, the next thing is to make sure when you're writing content and you're doing it, all right, so semantic relevance and everything is important, but put your unique spin on that content. And so if you see a lot of it is professionally written by a doctor, it's professionally ri written by someone who has a medical background, you write that content from a newbie or a, a non-medical perspective. And you write it in terms of that you're not an expert, but you're someone that's from the outside that's looking in, and that's a perspective, that's a fresh perspective that Google might be interested in and might take into account. And I've seen it made it make it to feature snippets and also to AI overviews. And the next thing is when you answer a question. Now, a lot of people, they make a list of FAQs. They will search Google, they make a list of FAQs, and they'll answer those questions in, the, in, in, the, in their article. When you're doing that, make sure that every question is answered in detail. Now, I said that every snippet should be 100 words, but there's no rule against it being 150 words, 120 words, but it should answer the question in detail. So start with a direct answer to the question and then fill it out, pat it out, make sure it's well described. Um, so there's a lot of detail. You don't need to add a graphics to it because the AI overviews right now doesn't pick that up, but you know, just make sure it's really well described, it's very easy to read, and that you have all the semantic elements in each snippet of content that you create. So I hope you guys found this video useful as always. I'm gonna say this once again for the hundredth time, make sure that you test this and you are testing multiple things because AI overviews is evolving and you should be evolving your strategy alongside it. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this video. As always, like and subscribe, make sure to share the video and I'll see you in the next video.